hey, what's going on, uh, Gray City Church fam, and those that are kind of tuning in and watching Grow a Little Wednesdays. And I, I just want to say thank you so much for those that have been watching. I hope uh, these times of leadership uh, have helped you in whatever kind of journey and whatever environment uh, that you lead in. I, I really think this, and it's so important. In fact, Pastor Brian Houston says, leadership's always the problem. Leadership's always the solution. And I'm just a firm believer in that. And uh, in, in fact, this is going to be our last week that we do Grow a Little Wednesdays. And I uh, feel like, uh, man, we've had a great time on Wednesdays, but we're just going to continually mix it up in, in how we can connect with you, especially um, you know, while we're doing church online and all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for watching. And I'm, I'm really excited to teach this last one on something that I think is really, really uh, important. But before we jump into that, I, I do just want to say, um, you know, uh, if you go to Grace City Church, I want to encourage you to be paying attention uh, to social media, pay attention to our weekly updates that we're emailing out on Thursdays because um, over the next, you know, kind of weeks to come, uh, we're going to have some announcements and it's really going to be our best way to communicate to you um, as we are thinking about what does it look like to reopen church, what does it look like to have church, um, uh, what are some dates and timelines uh, that we're thinking about that we're kind of navigating through. And so, um, so be, you know, thinking about and praying through those things with us. Um, you know, I'm meeting with our church council. I'm talking to our staff of going, okay, how can we most effectively um, do that? Um, we're going to do it when it's wise. We're going to do it when it's, um, when it's smart. Um, uh, but be praying for us um, as we kind of make those decisions um, in the weeks and months uh, to come. I uh, also really want to encourage you to be paying attention and lean into Zoom groups. So Zoom groups have started uh, this week, make sure that you jump in one. I, I, I'm, uh, you know, enjoying. I just started mine this morning uh, uh, at 7 a.m. Wednesday at 7 a.m. Uh, so if you're a guy, man, come join in with me. It's literally just we kind of just bounce some questions about leadership and life, and uh, and uh, we have a really good time doing that. So join a Zoom group, and then finally, I would say this: if you go to our church, maybe if you even if you don't go to our church, I want to encourage you to be praying. And what I want you to be praying is this, Lord, um, what's my part to play when we come back from this? What's my part to play in my local church? If you go to Grace City Church, be praying, God, what's my part to play at Grace City Church? If you go to a different church or maybe you're on staff at a different church, God, uh, wherever I've been, whatever my depth has been in the pool, God, I want to take a step towards the deep end. And I want to encourage you, um, you know, the reality is this, is that um, the world needs uh, Jesus people now more than ever, and they need us to step up, they need us to love, and they need us to serve. And so, uh, so I'm so excited to do that. So if you go to Grace City Church, be praying for when we come back. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to be more engaged and more dialed in than I've ever been. Uh, well, with all that said, um, I, I want to jump into a teaching that I'm going to call Eyes Wide Open. Eyes Wide Open. It's amazing what you and I miss. It's amazing what we don't see. It's amazing what can happen right around us and we can be totally oblivious to. In Judges chapter 16, verse 6, in Judges 16, there's this story going on with Samson and Delilah. Samson falls in love with Delilah and, uh, and she is essentially, um, you know, Put into his life that she might betray him, uh, for he is very strong, and uh, and his enemies want to know where does this strength come from. And in Judges chapter sixteen verse six, it says, "So Delilah says to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that one should subdue you." And and uh, the first few times he tells her things that just aren't true. Uh, he tells her that, you know, if they bind us with this certain, if they bind me with this certain type of rope, I wouldn't be able to break free. And so they try that. It doesn't work out. And then he, you know, kind of lies to her again and, and it, it doesn't work out. And then he finally tells her. And so three times she goes to him and, and when he tells her um, how you can take his strength, um, some guys come and they try to do it. And it's amazing to me that it never dawns on him hey, bro, uh, she's out to get you. And it just, it, it, I can look at that and I can judge that. And yet there's been many times in my own life, in my own leadership, uh, where I've just missed things. 
where, where I have just not seen things that I probably should otherwise see. So, you know, here's a prayer that I pray often over my life. God, give me eyes to see. Give me eyes to see. And I think there's a few things um, that you and I really need the Lord's help with in order to see. Because uh, there's some things, if you don't see them, uh, it's going to do some damage to your life and, and to your leadership. And, and, and the first one is this. This is kind of a, God, give me eyes to see, number one, where I need to grow. Give me eyes to see where I need to grow. Um, and the reality is this. You will need help to see this. You will need help to see this. Um, that's, why, that's why there's a benefit to pastors. In, in, in fact, there are times in my life where, in fact, I, I'm, I'm talking to people and, and they're just making destructive decisions. And, and sometimes I go, man, what's the point of pastors? What's the point of leaders? What's the point of parents? What's the point of mentors? Um, what's the point of having these people in our world and in our life if nobody in our life has what I call veto power? And, and in my life, I have like four people in my life that have what I call veto power, meaning this. If I went to them and I said, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing, they could say no. And there wouldn't be a back and forth. There wouldn't be a, like a discussion. They just have that sort of kind of power. And, and I've given it to them. They, they didn't just steal it. <laughs> I gave that authority to them. And they have that authority in my life because you need people to help you see where you need to grow. It, 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 it's it's kind of like, um, you know, when you walk around, you ever walk around for like a good chunk of the day um, with something in your teeth and, and, and you go to look in the mirror, maybe you get home from work or something like that and you go to look in the mirror and you're like, oh my goodness, I have something in my teeth. And you realize it was from something that you ate at lunch. And then you start to wonder things like, does anybody love me? Like, do I have any friends at all? Does anybody at work even like me? You start wondering those types of things because you're like, who would let me uh, just walk around like this and not say anything? See, the reality is this, man, you got to have some people in your world that love you, care about you enough to say, hey, um, you're doing this and it's, it's, not, it's not really helping you. It's one of the things that I love about our Grace City Leadership Institute program is that students who could be doing their college in any other format decide to come to Gray City and do their college in this format. And the thing that they're getting at Gray City um, that they're, they're not gonna get if they just go to college is that they're gonna do things in life and they're gonna have things in their teeth and that college is just gonna let them cruise by. That college is just gonna let them, them navigate. In our environment, we're gonna say, hey, you got something in your teeth, right? We need help in order to know where we need to grow. By the way, it's called a blind spot for a reason. It was funny, the other day I was talking to one of my good friends just about leadership, and, and, and this is what he said. He said, hey, like, what do you think your biggest blind spot is? And I started laughing at the question. I started laughing, he was, he was like, what? I was like, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what my biggest blind spot is. That's why it's called a blind spot. See, the reality is, is you have blind spots and if you think you know what your blind spot is, um, you don't because you don't see it. And so um, we don't see this stuff. And I, I would submit this too. Sometimes we don't see this stuff because we don't want to see it. Uh, we, we don't, we're not asking the question to people around us. We're not even asking the question to God, Lord, where do I need to grow? But I would just encourage you, man, get eyes to see where you need to grow. Uh, here's another one. Um, where we need help. God, give me eyes to see obvious spiritual attacks. You and I, we need to be able to see obvious spiritual attacks. Um, now, I, I'm a firm believer in this. Um, I, I don't think there's a demon behind every door. Uh, you know, um, may, maybe some of you grew up in really what I would call very, very Pentecostal churches, and there's a demon behind everything. If you trip and fall, um, a demon got you. Um, you know, if you don't have a parking spot, demon got you. Uh, I, I don't think there's a demon behind every bush. I don't think there's a demon behind every door. But can I submit to you something? There is a demon behind some doors. There, there, there's not a demon behind every door, but there is a demon behind some doors. And so uh, I, I would encourage you to be extra mindful when your joy is getting attacked. 
Be extra mindful um, when you should be in a time of celebration and yet you're easily annoyed. You know, does your joy get attacked during great or big ministry moments? It, it is something happening out of the norm. And this is where um, you, you have to be kind of a discerning person. You got, you got to sense these things. You got to ask the Spirit of God to help you with these things. Like there are times where Christina and I uh, get in an argument, get in a fight, and, and it's a normal, what I would call a normal disagreement, a normal fight that we're over in about an hour and we're all good and everything's fine, right? And you got to be able to t- discern that between there's been other moments where it felt like, man, we were both easily irritable. And we were having those, those weeks or those months um, where, where we had to pause. Like we've had literal times where we've been kind of at each other, um, you know, m- maybe over days or over weeks or over months. And we finally had to go, you know, we need to stop for a second because this doesn't feel like a normal tiff. This doesn't feel like a normal thing. We need to pray because this isn't feeling like normal married stuff. This is beginning to feel like a spiritual attack. And can I just encourage you, man, do your best to sense the difference in that. Like if, if you're going to work and, and, and things are happening and you're easily irritable for a day, okay. Like, you know, maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Maybe you didn't get your coffee. Maybe whatever the case may be. If you find yourself in that spot for a week, two weeks, you ought to stop and go, is the enemy of my soul trying to steal my joy? God, I need eyes to see these spiritual attacks, uh, you know, and, and that's where I would just encourage you, man, to pray, to bind the plans of the enemy of your life, to loose the spirit of God, right? The Bible says whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so, so the kingdom of God is about binding and loosening, right? Um, you know, um, God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind the spirit of depression. And God, we loose the spirit of joy. That's what a prayer like that might look like. So um, be aware of obvious spiritual attacks. You have the authority of the believer. If you are in Christ, you have the authority of the believer. Uh, Number three, uh, God, give us eyes to see what you are doing. Give us eyes to see what God is doing. Um, We have this major propensity to see what's not happening and totally miss what is happening. Well, it's like our instinct is to totally miss what God is doing um, and to see everything that's not happening. Um, uh, there's this video that professors, you know, psychology professors like Christina um, will show in some of their like Psych 101 classes. In fact, you may have seen this video or, or you can YouTube uh, this video. And what they'll do is they'll show these in Psych classes and what they'll ask, there'll be a, a number of people, at, you know, in like a playground and they'll be kind of, you know, holding a ball. Um, one person will be holding a ball. And what, what it will say at the very beginning is it will say, um, count the number of passes, um, you know, during this time. And they'll play the video and they'll show people just tossing the ball. They'll show, you know, 15 people or so just tossing the ball to each other. And you'll be watching this video intently and you're counting them up and you're going one, two, three, and you're watching this video. And at the end, it's almost like the hat game when you go to a baseball game. It's like, what hat is it under? Um, at the end, they'll ask you, um, uh, you know, how many passes uh, you know, did they make? And everybody in the class is going 14, 12, 11. Like er- er- everyone thinks you know, that they have the number. And, and it won't even give you the number. The very next thing on a black screen, it will say, but did you see the gorilla walk by? And you'll go, what? Like, no, a gorilla didn't walk by. Like they were just passing the ball. I would have noticed a gorilla walking through a group of people. And sure enough, what they'll do is they'll replay the video. And while they're passing, now you're looking for a gorilla. And sure enough, in the middle of that video, a gorilla comes, stands right in the middle of the screen, actually beats its chest, and then walks off. And, and, and you ask yourself, how did I miss that? And here's how you missed it. Because we see what we're looking at. We see whatever we are looking at. And so, man, if you want to see what God is doing, you got to look at what he's doing. If you want to be aware, if you want to be stirred up by what God is doing, man, you got to be cognitively aware of what God is doing. Stop looking at what God isn't doing in your own mind and start looking at what he is doing. You should always know what God is doing. You should have your finger on that pulse. 
Uh, number four, uh, this is a big one. Give us eyes to see, eyes to see what is producing fruit and what isn't. What is producing fruit and what isn't. Another way of saying it is this, what's working for you and what isn't. What's working for you and what isn't. It never ceases to amaze me how people will be so committed to an approach that isn't working for them. It never ceases to amaze me that people will be uh, committed to a dating approach, a marriage approach, a financial approach, a serving in church approach, a going to church approach, a work approach, a school approach, a friendship approach. It, it, it blows my mind how committed we can be to approaches that aren't working. And so, so just admit if something isn't working, God, give me eyes to see what isn't working for me. You have to keep your eyes open to this. What is producing fruit? What isn't producing fruit? And then you got to throw yourself into the things that are producing fruit and things that aren't producing fruit. You, you need to get coaching. You need to get help so that you can move down the direction of going, okay, if this isn't working for me, I got to find an approach that does work for me. Uh, here's, here's number five. This is such a big one. Um, man, we need eyes to see, number five, those around me. Those around me. Um, don't get caught up in your own feelings. D don't get so caught up in your feelings that you miss just the other people that are around you. It is so easy to live on what I call planet me. Come on, you ever find yourself living on planet me? You're just in a room full of people, not, not engaging them, not talking to them, not thinking about them. You're just, you're just thinking about yourself. Um, here's what I found, right? The Bible teaches that those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So what that tells me is that the nourishment of my soul actually comes from when I serve other people, that I'm actually refreshing myself. It's actually, you know, um, self-indulged to a degree when I serve other people because in turn, that is going to refresh me. I've never met anybody that got refreshed being selfish. I've never met anybody that ah, caught their breath by being selfish. And so don't move so fast. You got to open your eyes. You have to look around. I think a lot of times we over-spiritualize discernment, right? You know, there's some people, right, that will go, wow. Like, like my wife, Christina, she has the spiritual gift of discernment, right? And, and so that, that's, a, that's something else. But I think sometimes, the, the, I think we over-spiritualize discernment. Most of the time, the most discerning people are just those that are paying attention. They're just the people that keep their eyes open and keep their head on a swivel so that they can see maybe the pain in people's eyes. They can see the heartache in people's eyes. They know how to listen to people. They know when to ask for prayer. They know how to encourage people. They know what to do. And so let's make sure that we're just, we're just looking around. We're just mindful of people. Um, uh, give us eye, God, give me eyes to see the needs of the people around me. And then, uh, and then number six, last one here. Oh man, this is a good one. It, it, it gets a little bit uh, to number three, what God is doing. But uh, man, we need eyes to see how good life is. We need eyes to see how good life is. Um, you can see life one of two ways. You can see uh, life in this form, that life isn't all I want it to be. You can see life like that. Life isn't all I want it to be. And I don't think anybody's life, in fact, um, right now I'm watching uh, uh, The Last Dance, right? Which is the, the documentary on the Chicago Bulls and it's really focusing on Jordan, obviously. And, and, um, and it was interesting, it, it, uh, this last episode that I watched, it, it showed him shooting a commercial. And one of the lines in the commercial that he says, he says, you know, a lot of people would wanna be Michael Jordan for a day or a week. Um, but I'd really love um, for people to be Michael Jordan for a year and see if they really want that. Now think about that for a second. You have Michael Jordan during the prime of his career, the prime of his earning power, the prime of, man, he's making so much money, he's the most known guy, he's playing in the NBA, and what he's telling you is, man, you know what, um, if there are things that I could change about my life, um, I would, right? Try being me for a year. And, and it's just true. Even people at that level can look at and go, man, life isn't all I want it to be. Nobody has a life. I think sometimes 
we're deluded into looking at other people's life and we don't know the ins and the outs and we go, man, life is perfect for them. I'm sure that life is all they want it to be. And, and you can look at life like that or you can look at life from this lens, life is good. Life is good. And, and I would be willing to bet um, that if you looked at it from the lens of life is good and begin to live out of an overabundance of that perspective, can I just tell you, um, I think there would be some things in your perspective that would shift the way you view life and therefore shift your life. And I, I, I just, I just want to encourage you, um, pray daily. God, give me eyes to see today. Give me eyes to see what you're doing. Give me eyes to see those around me. Give me eyes to see how good life is. Give me eyes to see spiritual attacks. Give me eyes to see where I need to grow. Um, and, and you and I, um, if, we can, if we can see well, um, then, uh, then, then I think it'll really help us on our spiritual journey. Well, uh, man, I, I love you so much. Thank you so much uh, for watching. And again, um, in fact, I, I, I want to pray for you right now, uh, just that God would open up your eyes, that you would begin to see things um, maybe that you've been missing right now. And if you were honest, you, you were looking at those six, I'm sure there's one or two that you really resonate with that you would say, man, my eyes are closed in this area and I need God to open them. Uh, but let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for everything you are. God, give us eyes to see. Uh, Lord, I pray you would open up our eyes that we might see the world and people and life um, the way you see it. Uh, God, I pray uh, for all those, um, God, that, that might be struggling under the weight of this pandemic, whether it's physical sickness or whether it's a loss of job or just being out of work or, or, or um, maybe married couples kind of going at it because they're around each other all the time. And uh, um, God, God, whatever it is, Lord, I pray you would just be with us, that you would encourage us. Uh, Lord, I pray for the days that the church gets to gather again, not just our church, but all the churches. Uh, and God, that, that when that happens, God, that we would see revival, that we would see powerful things um, come to play. And, uh, and Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, Grace City, we love you. Get in a Zoom group and uh, be paying attention to some um, announcements um, that are going to be um, coming in the weeks to come. Love you.